Good evening, Heathfield. So we He's joined a dating app called Growler. Hello everyone and welcome. Scooter, come on. Welcome to another episode of our Irish Country Life here in the west coast of Ireland. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Nikolai and together with Chris is doing the filming and Scooter, the main man. I'd like to welcome you to the house and I'm going to give you a very short tour of the hallway. And after we have our tour of the hallway, you'll come and join me in the kitchen where we'll be doing some delicious sweet treats. So where we'll start. Well, the first place we're going to start is we're going to start with the old telephone. I remember when we used to call the house before there was a mobile phone. We used to ring the house to speak to the Baroness and the old fashioned telephone would ring and the butler would answer the phone. Good evening, Heathfield. So we had to replicate and we had to get the old telephone and put that there as well. OK, so we we have walls in the house, obviously, <laughs> but we have walls of paintings. And this is our religious wall. Not that we're religious or anything, but Chris went through a phase of liking religious paintings. So we decided that we'd gather religious paintings and we'd put them on this wall. But the walls change. The walls don't move, but the paintings move. So we have some nice religious paintings on this wall. We also have some lovely uh, gandilas again which we would have bought at different occasions. We would have returned to Cyprus on holiday and we would have gone to the church shop um, opposite Ayas Lazarus and we would have purchased some nice gondolas. Different coloured glass. This is a particularly nice one with the beautiful green, which is probably one of my favourites. I say that and then I go upstairs and see the red one and I like that one too. But anyway, um, again, we have some lovely cushions. Uh, with the beautiful gold thread, really, really lovely. And we had some lovely barley twist chairs, which I had covered, recovered in a lovely green, emerald green velvet fabric. Okay, on this wall, here we have some beautiful, really, really stunning. I remember buying them for Chris as a gift for Christmas one year from a antique shop in the Cotswolds. And they are some beautiful Florentine icons. Um, really, really stunning. They're actually painted on copper. Um, which is really nice. Um, oh, and there's a red candela. See, I like the red one as well. I also love the, um, I always class them as a piece of furniture, the radiators in the house, because they're so detailed um, and we fill them with old antiquarian books and things. I always call them a piece of furniture. I like to refer to them as that. So here we have some more icons. We have some um, orthodox icons and we have a lovely cross with some, again, antiquarian books. Okay, I'm not sure if it picks up on the camera, but the walls we painted in a Trump Loyal effect, a stone uh, wall brick effect, um, which me and Chris did, and we did it right the way throughout the hall. And the reason why we did that was because the walls in the hallway are quite textured, so we felt they'd lend themselves to that very old stone look, and they do wonderfully. Um, a lot of people actually do think they're tiles or stone. Here we have the mad, crazy King George which is a reverse painting on glass. I'll let Chris, although it's difficult to video because it's glass, it reflects the light from the camera. We have some taxidermy, we have box, 
and we have an otter's head at the top. Sorry, badger. I'm looking at it from the front down low, so it looks to me like an otter, but it's a badger. Okay, and then again above the door frame, we have lots of lovely icons. And this part of the house wasn't the original part of the house. So this was the part that was added on. So remember, the house was two parts. There was an old farmhouse, which is the part where the kitchens are, which doesn't have very elaborate cornicing or anything. Whereas the whole way from here on in is where all the cornicing takes place and the ceiling roses and the shutters, beautiful shutters. Also, we have an amazing painting here, King George and the Dragon. And this was a present I bought Chris for his 40th birthday. And I had a party all planned and painting arrived from a gallery in London and I had it put on the wall, covered in a sheet, and then we got that dreaded phone call that his mum had passed away in Cyprus. So we had to abandon the party, obviously, and we left to head off to Cyprus to um, say goodbye and farewell to his poor mum. Yeah, yeah, Bobby, I called her. So, but this is a beautiful painting in a lovely frame. And my God, when this arrived, I thought, how am I going to get this on the wall? I was literally here like this with my knee, trying to hold it in place while my brother came along gladly and helped me put it together. So that was his present for his 40th birthday. And I won't tell you how many years. Okay, the chandeliers and the wall lights in the hallway came from a, a shop in Nicosia in Cyprus, so the capital of Cyprus, that made stuff for the churches. And the icons on there are all hand-painted. And I remember we went to purchase them and we wrapped them in bubble and we wrapped them really well. And we were terrified about getting these chandeliers onto the aeroplane. Anyway, we got them onto the aeroplane. I think it was Cyprus Airways at the time. And when we got to Belfast or Dublin, whichever airport we flew into, I remember going to retrieve them from the belt. And I knew straight away that all the arms had just been bent like that. So I thought, well, they're either all broken or they're very badly damaged. But anyway, they weren't. We managed to straighten them out and everything was OK. On the wall here, I just want to draw your attention to this beautiful antique original dolly switch, which would have been here as long as the house has been here. And it's a really lovely one. So the staircase is all original. The carpet is original. The carpet, when we arrived, we didn't realize that she wanted to remove the carpet and take the carpet with her to her castle in Vichy in France. Um, and we were devastated because it's a really, really good quality Axminster carpet. And it was made for a church here in Sligo, which couldn't afford it in the end. So the Baroness bought it and she laid it here at the house and we decided we were going to buy it when we were buying the house. So we paid extra for the carpet, but it was well worth it because it is beautiful carpet. The staircase is original with its beautiful trifoil design. And I remember the wardrobe up in the Shinazari room upstairs. I remember that comes in three sections and it's ginormous. And to get that into the house, to turn the corner, I thought they were going to break the staircase. It was that heavy. But actually, the staircase managed to survive, thank God. So all is well. This is what we call our gallery wall. This is of all our ancestral paintings, of portraits of different people, Queen Elizabeth I, etc. And this is, we're still building on this wall. It goes a long way up, but we'll get there. There's a lot more Christmases to come and birthdays, I can assure you. So this is our gallery wall. OK, so me and Scooter are just having a little chat because he's joined a dating app called Growler. He's decided that him and Maggie are going to have some time apart and he'd like to spend a little bit of time checking what's available and what's out there. So he says in his own words. So we have to allow him to do that. So we've now renamed the stairs Bachelor's Walk. So if anybody knows of an eligible lady, and she must be a lady for our scooter, then he's now eligible. But he has to smile a little bit more, don't you? So say hi to everybody, and hopefully somebody will find you a wife that you're happy with, because you don't seem to be happy with Maggie at the moment. You've decided to have a little break. What do you reckon? Hmm? He still has his card that he got from Maggie, who was posing with her brother, Doug, and he still insists on keeping it beside his bedside cabinet. So he's saying not all has gone to loss. 
maybe they could rekindle, but they just want to have a little break at the moment. So I don't know if that's got something to do with the losing weight lark that's been going on around here, but yeah, something's going on inside his mind, but we're going to talk it through. Aren't we, Scooter? Or maybe not. Maybe he doesn't want to talk anymore. So for now, we're going along Bachelor's Walk, and we're happy with that. Now I know something that's going to perk him up. Sweet treats! You want some sweet treats? Oh, yeah, let's go make some sweet treats. There we go. And he's off. Straight to the kitchen. So now for those sweet treats that I was telling you about. Very simple to make. Anybody who likes Ferrero Rocher, these are very similar. They're not the same but they're very similar to Ferrero Rocher. We're going to do two types. We're going to do the coconut one, so a bit like the Raffaella, and we're going to do the one which is dipped in chocolate and then covered in toasted hazelnuts, a bit like the Ferrero, original Ferrero Rocher. So what we have is we have in our bowl 340 grams of desiccated coconut. Okay. We also have 400 grams, so one tin of condensed milk, the Nestle condensed milk or any condensed milk, one tin, 400 grams. We also have some whole almonds, which I have just literally toasted them on a dry pan just to bring out the nuttiness and the flavor of the almonds. And the same with some chopped hazelnuts. I put them on the pan just to toast them again to crisp them up and bring out the nuttiness. Also here, I have a bowl of just desiccated coconut, which is what we will be just rolling the balls in when we're finished. I have some chocolate which is melting on a bain-marie and we'll keep that melting until we're nearly ready to start doing the dipping so it doesn't set. And I also have some little petty four cases which you can buy in the shops and you can buy them in black, you can buy them in gold, all different pretty colours. I just have some white ones here and so we'll use these. And a baking tray with a piece of greaseproof paper and that's basically for when you've rolled your balls to set them on to set and dry. Okay, so we'll get started. I'm going to use gloves because it's a little bit messy when you dip your hands in there to mix them, but you can use your hands. I have done so also. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add my condensed milk into my desiccated coconut. Getting all of that lovely gooeyness out of there. Okay. Once that's in with the coconut, then it's literally a case of stirring it to combine the two ingredients together. And would you believe, my friends, that is all that's going into this recipe. Now, once that's all combined, we will then form it into little balls. We will put an almond in the center. If you don't like almonds and you want to put a pecan nut or a walnut, or you want to put a hazelnut, you can do that also. There's no hard and fast rules as to what, or if you just like them plain, you don't like the nut, or you've got small children and you don't want to give them a nut, then you can leave the nut out. But I think it's nicer with the nut. Okay, so we've now literally combined our ingredients together. Okay. And we will start to form our little balls. Okay, so very simply grab yourself a little handful Okay, and again, there's no hard and fast rule, as big or as small as you like them to be. I don't like them to be too big because they are a very rich, sweet, or truffle, whichever you prefer to call them. So you put a hole in the middle and you stick your almond in, or your nut of choice. You roll it into a ball once your nut's inside, and then you literally dip it in your coconut. Okay, once you've coated it in coconut, you can again just shape it into a nice a nice ball and there we have it onto your baking tray and these are better when they're set a little bit so you just carry on doing that until all your mix is used up now how easy are they and they are i swear to you when you try these you'll never want to buy a Ferrero Rocher again. You will want to make your own all the time. And they're lovely if you want to give them as gifts to people. Really, really lovely. And there you can see. So I'll carry on until I've used up all this mix. Okay, so I've melted my chocolate. I'm dipping my 
coconut balls in the chocolate and then I'm rolling them round in the hazelnuts and I'm literally popping them on the tray and they are I'm eating them as I'm going through. They are absolutely first class delicious. I promise you, you'll never want to buy Bro Rocher to have at home yourself. Good idea <clears throat> making them would be maybe to use like a melon baller or something, but you can make them slightly smaller. I have made them. What's bad about that? Okay, so I'm going to carry on chocolating and putting hazelnuts, and then they will go into the fridge to set. Bye bye from Nikolai, Chris, and of course the little man Scooter, and we'll see you all very soon. Oh, they are to die.